Hey y'all, today we're gonna to be doing section 8.10, which is on waste reduction. Our learning objective for today is that you can describe changes to current practices that could generate the amount, that could reduce the amount of generated waste and their associated drawbacks and benefits. We're going to learn about recycling, composting, dealing with e-waste, some landfill strategies, and um, some of our like combustion decomposition stuff. So a good amount of information we'll cover today. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the three R's, which hopefully you've heard of at some point in life, but if you haven't, the three R's are reduce, reuse, and recycle. And they're actually in order of um, kind of the best way to do this. So the first one, reducing. This is gonna be like reducing your consumption. And this is the most sustainable of all of the three options because it's gonna be decreasing the natural resource, resources <laughs> that are harvested and the energy inputs that's needed to create, package, and ship all of these goods. So an example of reducing would be um, using a reusable water bottle. So to reduce the plastic use that you have, um, biking in order to reduce gasoline use, having a um, smaller wardrobe to like reduce the amount of clothes that you're needing. And so that's gonna be like reducing and it is the most sustainable. Second in line is gonna be reusing. This is gonna be the second most sustainable because it doesn't require additional energy to create a product. Originally that energy had to be there to first create it, but like if you're reusing stuff, then it doesn't have to keep being made to like give you brand new stuff. So some um, examples of this could be buying secondhand clothes, using old wood pallets for furniture, or reusing like plastic takeout food containers, things like that. And then the third one is recycling. And this is gonna be the process where we process and convert solid waste materials into new products. Some example of this would be like glass being turned into glass again, which is known as like a closed loop or plastic water bottles being turned into fabric for clothes and jackets, which is known as like an open loop system. So for example, if we look at all these plastic materials, that can be made into like a jacket if we have the recycled plastics going into there. Now recycling is actually going to be the least sustainable of our three R's. Um, it's gonna be like better than landfill, but the least sustainable of these, because you still it still takes a lot of energy to process and convert these waste materials. And energy is going to usually require things like um, fossil fuels, we're gonna have to have a lot of transportation, kind of factories, things like that. So if we kind of think of each of these steps here um, in order to transport it to the processing plant, for the processing plant to then turn it back into new glass to be used again like this, entire system, it does still take energy into it, which is going to make it a lot less sustainable than just reducing the things that you're consuming. So there are some pros and cons to recycling. Some benefits of recycling is that it's going to reduce the demand for new material, especially when we're thinking about like metals and wood, which can cause habitat destruction when we are trying to gather those and then soil erosion when we're harvesting that wood or mining for those metals. It's going to reduce the energy required to ship raw materials and to produce new products, which means we have fewer fossil fuel combustion um, and less greenhouse gases and um, all of that stuff. And we are going to also reduce the landfill volume, which is gonna conserve our landfill space and reduce the need for more landfills, which in our last set of notes, we kind of covered all of the downsides that landfills can give. Now there are going to be some cons to recycling. Recycling is actually very costly and it does require a significant amount of energy in order to do. If you think of all the steps of like um, the distribution of things, um, all the transportation and all of that, it's actually going to require a good amount of energy. Now, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize when it comes to recycling, so cities that do offer recycling services, they need to process and sort all of that, which again, takes energy. However, they also need to sell their collected materials. And the reason that I underlined sell is that um, this is actually one of the biggest 
difficulties in this entire recycling process. Up until recently, the United States' way of dealing with this was to just send all of our recyclables over to China and China would buy it from us so that they could um, use them to like make new uses of those plastic and metals and things like that. As of recently, China has said they're good. They don't want it. And the United States has had like a huge issue with that. And um, even in like non-typical situations where countries start turning away stuff, like it's just kind of a volatile selling market. The prices are going to change rapidly. You're also going to have a lot of times where we produce more recycling than other countries need or other um, processes that are going to be using these recyclable materials need. And so oftentimes when we have that excess and we can't sell it or other countries don't want it, it's going to lead all this recycled material to actually being thrown away which kind of defeats the purpose. If you're a person who like goes and is meticulously like pulling things out and making sure you're recycling them, the idea that a lot of this actually still goes straight into the landfill because we couldn't sell it somewhere is kind of disheartening, which again, I mean, if it does work out, it's better than landfills, but this is sort of why doing all the steps before recycling to like decrease your consumption and to reuse things This is why it's better than recycling, because recycling um, is actually not as re, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not like as um, helpful as we sometimes think it is, because a lot of times the things that we think are getting recycled end up not because nobody wants them at the rate that we're producing them. So um, another just like, PSA for recycling, you should still absolutely do recycling because it is better than nothing. Um, But one of the big problems that happens with recycling is that citizens will recycle items that shouldn't be recycled, like wrappers with their food, styrofoam, um, fun fact, even like little plastic lids that come on containers, you aren't actually supposed to recycle some of those. And so it increases the cost for the cities to sort and process And because they aren't able to go and just like take out every little bit necessarily, if you are putting like styrofoam into a batch that's supposed to be recycled, they'll usually just throw away the entire batch because it's not worth it for them to try to go through and process everything. And so that's just kind of, I mean, it's a downside of recycling, but it's just a PSA to you all. Make sure that you double check that everything you're recycling is actually recyclable. I went and like printed out a diagram of all the recyclable things and I taped it up next to my recycling bin so that I wouldn't make that mistake. Um, But just make sure that things are supposed to be recycled are actually what's like going in there. Now this diagram here is, um, sorry, actually showing the reality of how much of our global plastic waste ends up being recycled, incinerated, versus discarded. Now, a lot of this is people who just like aren't doing recycling, but some of that is also those of us who think we're recycling, but it ends up not getting sold. And so it ends up being discarded. Um, So to be honest, I feel like this is a little bit of a horrifying number. Now the numbers are increasing, which is awesome, but um, still just kind of data to be aware of. All right, now we're going to talk about composting. And composting is where you take organic matter like food scraps, paper, yard waste, and it is decomposed under controlled conditions. Now, most cities in our area and many places nationally do have composting options. But this is also something that can be done on a smaller scale, like in your backyard. Like you can get a compost bin if you want to and just like compost and make your own soil with it. But Just going with like the municipal city level of it, um, that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about here with composting. Now, the benefit of composting is that it's going to reduce the landfill volume and it can produce rich organic matter that can enhance water holding capacity and nutrient levels for agriculture or garden soil. And so this is a process where you can actually produce a valuable product that can be sold, which is compost. Um, I, as a gardener, I put compost on my lawn. I put compost on my garden. Um, and so I, I go and buy compost. So this is something that is a product that can be sold. It's also going to reduce the amount of methane that is released by anaerobic decomposition. That is kind of the condition under landfills. This is more of like your natural decomposing process that's happening here. 
Now, in order to do composting properly on a large scale, but even if you're doing it in your backyard, is it needs to be done with like a proper ratio of browns, which are like carbon-based things, to greens, um, things like lawn clippings versus um, leaves or food waste or stuff like that. Um, and so it needs to have like a proper ratio, which is usually 30 to one more browns to greens. And it also needs to be aerated and mixed in order to optimize decomposition because bacteria is going to need that oxygen to do the decomposition. So it's kind of like a process. You don't just throw all your food waste in a bin and hope that it's good. Um, this is kind of like a, there's a system to it. Now, some of the potential drawbacks of composting is that it does make a foul cell, foul smell <laughs> as everything is decomposing. Um, and that smell can be produced if it is not properly rotated. If you're properly like rotating and doing your aeration and ratios, it shouldn't really smell that much. But if it's done incorrectly, you get a really pungent smell and that's going to be attracting rodents or other pests, um, even like raccoons, flies, stuff like that. So that's just kind of a downside of composting when it's not done as it's supposed to. All right, now e-waste, we briefly talked about what that was. Remember, it's kind of your electronic waste from things like phones and computers. And it contains heavy metals, which can leach into the soil and the groundwater if it's if it is disposed of in landfills or in like an open dump. Now, most cities or most like developed countries are going to have systems for recycling this so that they can reuse and create new electronics. However, um, a lot of times developed nations don't want to take the manpower and effort that it takes to properly like deconstruct these things. That's my cat. To properly deconstruct these things, I'm gonna move this. Sorry, I'm getting like blinded by the sunshine in my house. Okay, um, so with the fact that a lot of these countries don't want to go through the more complicated process of how to properly deal with this e-waste, oftentimes um, we in the developing nations will just ship these off to developing nations where they don't have as strict of requirements for their workers and protection laws and going through all the proper health hazard precautions. And so instead of like dealing with the proper way to do it here, we'll often just ship it off to them so that those in lower income countries are going to have to deal with all of the problems that come with it. Um, so yeah, that's a thing. Now, ideally, if this is being done, um, all of this e-waste can be dismantled and sold to countries that can extract more valuable metals like gold, silver, and platinum from the motherboards of these electronics. However, oftentimes they're just burned or dumped due to less environmental regulations or lack of enforcement in these developing nations that this was shipped off to. Um, so this is kind of a problem with e-waste when it is not handled as it is properly supposed to, or when you have developing countries that are just trying to ship it off instead of dealing with it properly. All right. Um, oh, sorry. Looks like my photos are a little bit clumped here, but now waste to energy. This is the idea that our waste could be burned to reduce the volume and also generate electricity. Um, so the things, most things that we are throwing away can combust at high temperatures. And so you can actually use it as the same process that hopefully y'all are experts on now because of everything that we learned in unit six, where you burn things, you get heat, which is going to heat up water, which is going to make steam, which is going to spin a turbine, which is going to make a generator generate electricity. Um, so it's the same process. You're just using the heat from burning all this waste. Another option is methane gas can be produced by decomposition in the landfills. So remember that we have those pipes that are going to be collecting methane from the landfills. You can use that methane to generate electricity again by combustion, which creates heat, which is going to make steam from water, which spins a turbine, which powers a generator, which makes electricity. 
Some other benefits of this is that it's going to reduce the landfill volume and it's going to produce electricity without fracking or mining for these fossil fuels. We're just collecting it from the methane that's already being created in the landfills. Um, so this is a way where we can actually use some of like our landfills and our waste to give us energy to have a slightly better outcome for it. Sorry, that's my alarm. All right, this is going to be your 8.10 practice FRQ. And this is one where you're gonna be practicing the suggested skill of some math stuff. So here's our situation. Approximately 30 million mobile devices were sold in 1998 in the United States. The number sold increased to 180 million devices in 2007. So for the first part, I want you to calculate the percent increase of mobile device sales from 1998 to 2007. And for the second part, each mobile device sold in 2007 contained an average of 0 0.03 grams of gold. Calculate the number of grams of gold that were used in the production of the mobile devices sold in 2007. And that is your practice FRQ for 8.10. And those were your notes on 8.10 about waste reduction.